Happy 4th of July, everyone. We celebrated in the rectory by pulling out our winter clothes (laughs) and having hot chocolate. (laughs) The 4th of July is an opportunity for our country to collectively stop and consider and celebrate everything that makes our country great. As citizens, we know that America is not great by luck or sheer chance. Our country is great because of the courageous and countless sacrifices of everyone who has served our country, many of them laying down their lives to protect our freedom and our liberties. America is great because our founding fathers recognized that we have been created equal and endowed with our creator with certain unalienable rights. And the Bill of Rights, the first among these, is religious liberty. Religious liberty is about more than just how or where we choose to worship. Religious liberty is about our ability to seek the truth about God and to speak, to act, and to live according to our values and beliefs. The Founding Fathers were courageous in their own pursuit of religious freedom for our nation. If we think of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, there was only one Catholic, but two of the original signers lost their sons in the Revolutionary War. Another had two sons captured. Of the signers, five were captured by the British as traitors and tortured before they died. Nine died from wounds or from hardships of the Revolutionary War. Twelve had their homes ransacked and burned. And 17 lost every penny they had and every piece of property they owned. But none of them ever recanted or apologized for having signed the Declaration of Independence. As we continue our summer message series called the Summer of Saints, we are celebrating today a saint who, well, who made a similarly courageous sacrifice to that of those who founded our nation. Saint Thomas More. And I think we can rightly call St. Thomas the patron saint of religious liberty because ultimately, that's what he died for. St. Thomas More was known and respected by many for his great intelligence and his strong principles. He was a literary scholar and an eminent lawyer. He quickly rose in rank during the reign of King Henry VIII, and he eventually became the Chancellor of England. But Thomas More was also an intensely spiritual man. In fact, he was torn between which path to choose, that of a monastic life or one of civil service. And while he ultimately chose the life of civil service, the the practices of prayer, fasting, and penance would remain with him his entire life. In fact, under his clothes, he wore an itchy shirt made of goat's hair to remind him for, of his need for penance. And if you're ever on Jeopardy, that type of shirt is called a hair shirt. Henry VIII considered Thomas More to be his wise counselor and confidant. And so he was disappointed when Thomas would not support his divorce from Catherine of Aragon so that he could marry Anne Boleyn. And then when the Pope refused to grant Henry VIII an annulment, 
Henry VIII declared himself the supreme head of the church in England. Aware that this would be considered treason and ultimately cost him his life, Thomas More stood up for the truth of marriage as well as the truth that on earth the church's supreme head is the Pope, standing up for his spiritual authority. Thomas More was, after some time, committed to the Tower of London where he was eventually beheaded. But he courageously held fast to the truths of our faith as well as his ideals. It makes us think of the sacrifices of the Founding Fathers. And it's a stark reminder that freedom is not free and that our religious liberty has to be defended. It requires personal effort, just like it requires personal effort if we are going to advance along our path to holiness. Because none of us are born saints. Each of us is born with this inherited brokenness that we call original sin. In baptism, it's washed away and we are called to be saints, but it's, it's not that we need our personal effort. Holiness isn't about being perfect, but about beginning again when we fall. And for some of us, it's again and again and again and again before lunch. <laughs> Holiness starts with the realization that God loves you unconditionally and that you have to make a return for the love with which God first loved you. If you work, again, that personal effort, if you work at becoming that authentic, that best version of yourself, well, then you can be sure that you are going to enjoy the freedom and the joy that the saints experienced but not without suffering and pain. Because when Jesus blesses, he blesses with the cross. For St. Thomas More, this cross was being rejected by those who was closest to him. His, his people that he worked with, they, they could only see him as a subject and a servant to the king. And because of that, they couldn't see his holiness. It's kind of a funny line. When Thomas More was being led up to the platform where he was going to be beheaded, he said to the executioner, he said, if you help me up, I can find my own way down. I don't know. <laughs> but he said more seriously, I die the king's true servant but God's first. I die the king's true servant, but God's first. In today's gospel, Jesus was rejected by his own in a similar fashion. Those in Nazareth can't see him beyond being a carpenter or the son of Mary or, or someone they know. We don't know what Jesus was preaching that day, but we know this. His audience couldn't adjust their image of him to suit their needs. They did not want their priorities or their thinking to be challenged, and so they closed their ears. The gospel said they took offense at him. And for us, it takes tremendous courage to defend our religious freedom when it is unpopular. But the example of St. Thomas More shows us that it's something worth fighting and indeed dying for. So on this Independence Day weekend, let us remember that we are faithful citizens. Citizens in heaven as well as citizens on earth. While we worship on Sunday, let us not forget to live it on Monday.